Hey, it's Erin. In today's video, we're going to talk about three unique methods that you can implement in order to start gaining muscle faster. Now, of course, when it comes to gaining muscle, we have to look at overall training volume, rest, progression, which just basically means that you're increasing difficulty over time. Diet is also key. So we have to look at protein intake, making sure that you're getting about a gram of protein per pound of body weight. Also making sure that you have enough carbs. Carbs are really important for gaining muscle. Can you gain muscle on low carb? Yes, you can. It's just not optimal. We also have to look at rest, making sure that not only you're taking rest days, but you're also getting enough sleep at night. So now that all of those basics are covered, let's look at some of the different ways that you can perhaps increase that muscle mass. The first, protein cycling. Now, if you're not familiar with protein cycling, one of my favorite doctors, Dr. Gabrielle Lyon, talks about this. If you're over 35, we typically will have what's called anabolic resistance, and this increases as we get older. It's just something that happens. So with protein cycling, this is strategically increasing your protein intake during certain times of the day. So for example, breakfast and dinner, these are the two times where you really want to focus on that protein intake. If you think about it at breakfast, it makes sense. You're coming off of a fast, you're sleeping, right? So you're not eating <laughs> most of the time. And because of that, we need more protein. So instead of getting, let's say 25 to 30 grams of protein in the morning, maybe you'll bump it up to 40 to 50 grams of protein. Now I'm not saying that protein intake throughout the day is not important, but really focus on that breakfast meal and then focus on that dinner meal too. So having about 40 to 50 grams at dinner can help kind of hold you through the night, keep you from going catabolic and can also help a lot with muscle growth. Next, let's look at varying those rep ranges. Now, if you're like me, <laughs> you may love a certain rep range. And for me, it was that kind of that six to 10 reps. Um, I just did not like counting over 10. So if you're stuck in a certain rep range, it's really important that you get out of that rep range, not saying to stop training in that rep range, but incorporate your 10 to 20 reps, your 20 to 30 reps. And on some lifts, you might want to do five reps. And these are unsafe lifts, right? So it may be something like a leg press or a dumbbell deadlift, um, not leg extensions or lateral raises, you know? So exercise selection, of course, is going to matter here. But by varying the rep ranges, you're able to effectively train all of the different muscle fiber types. So if you typically lean a little bit more endurance space, more slow twitch muscle, training in those lower rep ranges can be really effective. And if you're used to training in the lower rep ranges, going from five to eight reps to 20 to 30 reps of an exercise, again, exercise selection is important, but by, by training the pump, training metabolites, you're really not leaving any gains on the table. So just make an effort to switch up those rep ranges and again, it's not something you have to do all the time, but really important to just implement a few days a week. Now, lastly, we're looking at frequency. So if you're training on a traditional bro split, you, you might be doing a muscle group once per week, maybe twice per week. So let's say you're training shoulders on Monday and by Thursday, you're not sore anymore and you could potentially be training shoulders again on Thursday, but maybe you're saving it till Saturday, or you only train them every Monday, or you maybe train chest every Monday and that's it. So think about taking all of that volume that you might do once per week and spreading it out over two to three sessions. What this is going to do, each time you train that muscle group, you're increasing muscle protein synthesis and your overall training volume is not necessarily going to increase, but you're stimulating muscle growth three times per week versus once a week. So changing up that muscle split can be really, really effective towards gaining muscle faster. 
You might look to do high frequency training where you're training total body, let's say four days per week, if that's what your training split is currently. If you're training five or six days per week, you may do push pull, um, but make sure that you're getting in that frequency. And this is gonna go a long way towards making gains. So if there's anything that you have questions about, if you want me to cover any topic, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and join the Fit Fam. Until next time, train smart and train hard, y'all.